Welcome to West Bethel and Spirit River United Methodist Church services. Today is Sunday, February 7th, 2021. My name is Pastor Guy Sadursky. Please let me introduce our praise band today. Today, Susan Imker, Kathy Dean, James Dean, Rocky Wilson. John Lindbergh and Jason Brown are our videographer and sound people today. Our purpose is to worship together with to worship together and praise God. Please welcome those who you are watching the service with and join us sing interact as you can. We will also be having communion today. So if you would at some point get something that is good for you in your home that you can have communion with us. We're pleased to know that people from Utah were able to enjoy our service this past week. Please join us for Everybody In. As human beings, anything we hear, see, or experience, we interpret. We give meaning to it based on our past experiences or life circumstances. There are times this might serve us well, but there are also times it can get us into trouble. For example, if someone walks past us in the hallway and does not even say hello, we might begin to tell ourselves a story and make assumptions pertaining to why.
may tell ourselves they are ignoring us because they are upset with us. Then we become defensive or upset with them and it comes out in our behavior toward them, which can lead to all kinds of unpleasant interactions. However, perhaps they were simply deep in thought about a project and were not focused on our presence as they passed, in which case it would have nothing to do with us. never leaves us, and that is why we can say it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea Thank you, Praise Band. Now it's time for announcements. Now, I do get some people who make comments about the jokes that I use. These said, they're the best and will make you laugh. So, people say that money is not the key to happiness. Yet I always figured if you had enough money, you could get a key, have a key made. We will not be meeting together in person until further notice. West Bethel, this month, the mission of the month is Matthew 25 food distribution. We're supporting and helping support that in money. Why was the horse so happy? Because he lived in a stable environment. 
To those who are from our congregations, we would like to invite you to participate in a reading right from the comfort of your home. We will provide the reading, and if you can video and send it to Pastor Guy at Comcast.net, we'll edit it into our service. If you would like us to come and video you, we can, pros we can probably make that happen as well. There is nothing like the joy on a kid's face when he first sees the PlayStation box containing the socks I got him for Christmas. Please remember our needs. Look at the emails that are going across at the top, the way to support the church. It's easy also, you can do it by credit card. But we still have obligations that go on monthly. Uh, just to spend, every time it snows, just think we've had to pay somebody to plow uh, because we do still use the building. So when you find yourself getting upset with someone or about something, check your story. What might you be telling yourself that results in hurt feelings? Defensiveness or anger? Then ask yourself, is it true or do I need to check it out and seek what is the truth? You will probably find that many of the things that you allowed to upset you were really no issue at all. The key, check your story and challenge your assumptions. You may find more happiness in your relationships and less drama in your life. Please join us as we sing Draw Me Close to lead us into prayer. to you. Thank you, Praise Ben. What a wonderful song as we lead into our time of joys and concerns and prayers. We certainly would like to lift up Monica and Carol as they both had surgery recently. Both are at home recovering and we hope that the pain continues to go away. I've been in contact with them and 
Things went well, but there still is always that pain and that healing time. And we look forward to them when, they're be, when they'll be able to come back and continue to join us with the praise band. We also want to thank Susan as she has stepped in and helped with the praise band. Um, we appreciate that and we appreciate the help and the praise band, the people that are here all the time. I've had a request to lift up Heidi. It's a friend of somebody who just had someone pass away within their family. Please let us know about many things that happened with you. This past week, we've had a wonderful, quick, fast, um, Matthew 25 type of thing, but it happened late Saturday with uh, just uh, a few things that we did get it out in an email and some food has gone directly to people. It was a 30 pound box of food and also uh, milk. Um, and we did this in cooperation, which is one of the things we've been looking with with another church. I'd like to thank John and Tammy who stepped up quickly and got it, and some people from the churches who dropped by and picked up what it was. It did not happen here, but it was a, a very nice thing, and, and <laughs> in, uh, with a speed that we were not aware of, and uh, yet it had to be done quickly. So thank you. And it just helps us look ahead as to where Matthew 25 is going to go or could go. We just need to make sure that we do it properly with COVID. So lift us up and the leaders as we look at that. We also lift up people who have financial food scarcity. We pray for them. We ask for those with mental health, with addictions as they go through. And of course, the COVID-19 and we know some people who are who have gotten the vaccines and will be continuing to get them. So let's lift them up, but also lift up our, those who are in leadership. And we ask that the Lord bless them and at, bless our state, our communities, and of course our church family. Please join me as we pray together. Father, we come to you again on this wonderful day. We may be in our pajamas. We may be in jeans. We could even be in bed. Or we could be sitting at a table. But let us join together as one. Knowing that we worship you. We lift up those in need. We ask, Lord, that you touch their lives. We lift up Carol and Monica as they recover. We lift up the family of somebody who lost someone. We lift up those who are suffering from addiction and those that are suffering with COVID, both in the loss and in those that have gotten it and recovered. We ask, Lord, that you watch over and guide all of our leadership as we continue to look to the future and now we join together in the prayer that you taught us so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Our sermon today the secret to being happier every day. When reading an edition of Parade Magazine, a short article entitled, The Secret of Being Happier Every Day, written by Allison Takata, the article presents the results of a recent scientific study that explored what things truly provide satisfaction in life. 
The article's opening paragraph reads, think you know what will make you happy? Recent studies may surprise you. Researchers have found that individual happiness levels do not correlate with money, success, or even good health. Here's what does matter. The article proceeds to give four secrets to happiness. As I read about the four secrets, I was not surprised. You see what was learned in the recent scientific studies had already been, been revealed and taught by Jesus and his apostles some 2,000 years ago. The researchers are only confirming the wisdom found in the scriptures. So let's look at those so-called secrets. One, being thankful. According to Sophia Saunia, Leo Mariski, a psychologist at the University of California, Riverside, people who make a conscious effort to count their blessings on a regular basis show marked improvement in their overall satisfaction with life. People who try to see the positive things in their lives are going to be much happier. People who try to try to dwell on their blessings that they enjoy each day and have a grateful heart have the sunniest dispositions. For the Christians, it's easier to be thankful because we know that what we have in this life comes from a God who chooses to bless us. What we have is not a matter of luck, blind chance, or accident. What comes into our lives come to us from someone who has the best interest at heart and is daily demonstrating their goodness and loving kindness toward us. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, and this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Every day in every situation, we can and should find something we can thank God for. Even in difficult times, which are often set for our spiritual betterment, we can find reason to be thankful. For he is near, and he will never forsake us. If you want to be happy in life, do not allow yourself to get into the habit of always grumbling and complaining about your life. Psalm 136, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Psalm 97, 12. Be glad in the Lord, your righteous, you righteous ones, and give thanks to his holy name. Secret number two. Do unto others. Want to feel good? Then do good. Donate glove. Donate blood. Carry someone's groceries to the car. Take a bowl of soup or a carton of soup to someone who's ailing. Little acts of kindness are not just beneficial for the person on the receiving end. They also are a boost for you. The doer. Studies show that performing five good deeds a week can significantly elevate your mood. Selfish people are some of the most miserable people on earth. People who only think about what they can get from other people and what other people can do for them are the most sad and depressing people that you can meet. Self-centered people are not happy people. As strange as it might sound, those who think about how they might make others happy and promote the interest of others are the happiest people you may see. No wonder we're taught in Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than themselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Those who have the richest lives are those whose lives are in good works for are rich in good works for others. Secret three. Get involved with others. It's tempting when other things aren't going well to shut out the world and sulk in solitude. Yet that's a mistake. 
Two of the top five factors in determining happiness are family relationships and community, says Richard Laird, author of Happiness, Lessons from a New Science. Investing in others and having them invest in you gives your life purpose. It also ensures that you will not sit at home every night wallowing in self-pity. So put yourself out there. Having a social network with people who care about you and those who care about us is especially important in producing happiness. God designated our families to be such a social network. Yet the truth is that not everything comes from families. Not every family is close-knit. Jesus says that our faith leads to our losing our family ties. He promises that we will begin a bigger family. That bigger family is the church. God designed the church to be a close-knit social network in which we can find purpose in caring for and supporting others. We need to ask ourselves from time to time, how much do I enjoy the church family? How much do I give myself to the church family? Do I allow the church family to involve themselves in my life? If we want happiness in the sense of fulfillment in our lives, we need to avoid isolating ourselves and making a conscious effort to follow God's counsel in cultivating relationships with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Number four, make the choice for happiness. This same person, the Sonia, reports that according to research, only 10% of our well-being is determined by circumstances, while 40% is a matter of intentional activity. The bottom line, happiness is a choice. Commit to living a better life each day, and chances are, you will. The point here is a lesson that all of us need to be reminded of. The circumstances that are beyond our control have little to do with our being happy. Happiness is based upon our response to life circumstances and our doing what is in our power to create a better life each day. Each day as we wake from our sleep, we need to adopt the attitude expressed in Psalm 118.24. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Apostle Paul commands us in 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Rejoice always. Again, in Philippians 4.4. 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. As a third century man was anticipating death. He penned these last words to a friend. It is a bad world, an incredibly bad world. But I have discovered in the midst of, of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found joy, which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our sinful life. They're despised and persecuted but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. There is joy beyond comparison in being a Christian. Henry Ward Beecher once said, the strength and the happiness of a man consists in finding out the way in which God is going and going in that way too. If you're a Christian, then you know that joy that I'm speaking of. If you're not, you're missing out on the joy of life. You can be a Christian and experience not only the forgiveness of your sins, but also the joy that accompanies it. When Jesus Christ enters our lives, we cannot help but to rejoice. Remember what the Ethiopian eunuch did he gave his life to Jesus and he was baptized. The Bible says in Acts 8.39, he went on his way rejoicing. To live a happy life, we must focus on righteous things. The Bible instructs us in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, be joyful always. 
Again, Philippians says, rejoice in the Lord always. And finally, Philippians 4.8 explains to us a secret. Here you go. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. If we want happiness, we must fill our minds with love, pure, admirable, and praiseworthy thoughts. If we want to be happy, we must think happy and uplifting thoughts. Proverbs verse, chapter 23, verse 7 says, As a man thinketh, so is he. For most of us, our inner dialogue doesn't consist of positive though it can, it can consist of stream of negative, critical, angry, self-blaming, and defeatist thoughts. When we engage in those negative thoughts and thinking patterns, we squeeze out the joy and happiness of our lives. A man named Harry Perry, not Harry Potter, was told he was dying of leukemia. So he threw in the towel and started to act as if his life was over. He quit his job, ruled out marriage, spent thousands of dollars on treatments, drank heavily and spent most of his time alone. He was waiting to die, but he might as well have been dead already. Harry's life was empty, even though he was not dead. As a matter of fact, he was not even dying. About five years after the initial diagnosis, another checkup, showed that Harry did not have the disease. He has since been married, bought a home, quit treatments. He feels great. Nothing has actually changed except Harry's attitude. When he thought he was dying, he set a course of self-destruction. When he was learned he was not a victim of leukemia, he set a course of happy living. The application of this story is the one that can be sip to many of us. We don't have to be dead. We don't have to be mentally dead. Looking at our negative attitudes, quenching our spiritual joy. If we want joy and happiness, we must change our attitudes. A daily commitment to live the Christian life is a commitment that leads to a better, happier, and more fulfilling life. Its fruits are reaped regardless of outside circumstances because God blesses with happiness and peace that flows from within. 1 Peter 3, 10 to 12. For the let him who means to love life and see good things, refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips from speaking guile, and let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. If people witness happiness in our lives, no matter our circumstances, they will take note. They will want to know why you're so happy. It will provide an opportunity to share Jesus with them. And that will lead to the greatest happiness in our lives. To live happy lives, we must purge anger from our hearts. In the movie, Forrest Gump, there is a scene that has one of the central characters, Jenny, returning to her old home after her father had died and the old home is broken down and abandoned. As she reflects on the abuse that she endured as a child, she's overcome by rage and begins throwing rocks at the house. Jenny finally falls to the ground in exhaustion, and the key scene closes with Forrest Gump phys physiologically saying, sometimes, there just aren't enough rocks. Many of us struggle with anger. 
It can stem from a variety of reasons, and some anger seems very justifiable. Yet unresolved anger leaves us reaching and crying out for more rocks. The rage is never satisfied. The happiness is squeezed out of our lives. Through the power of the Spirit of God that is living in us, we can find the strength to lay down the rocks of anger and forgive those who hurt us. Ephesians 4.31 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Once you let go of anger and bitterness that has been festering in your life, the sunshine of joy will rise up again and bring happiness to your life. In conclusion, to live happy lives, we must have a relationship with God, focusing on righteous thoughts and purge anger from our lives on a daily basis. If we do these three things, then we're on our way to live joyous, bright, and spiritual, cheerful, spiritual lives. May the Lord add his blessing to these words. And now, let's join together in communion. As we gather today in the sight of God to join in Holy Communion, know we're only a screen width apart. The God of all creation is not beholden to the bounds of time or places. God can transcend our physical distances. Through God and the mystery of Holy Communion, we become one creation, one body, one church. Join with me now in acknowledging our togetherness. Let's virtually say hi with those that are around you or remember somebody and say their name. Wherever you are, God's peace be with you. At the wedding feast, Jesus proclaimed, my time has not yet come. Yet, persuaded by his believing mother Mary, he turned water into wine. I ask you now to collect whatever elements you may have to serve as your bread and your fruit of the vine, knowing that grace will justify your choices in the sight of God. The solitary, solitary the leader, places these elements we put them right here. We have them here. The table is set. Let us proceed. God is with you. It is good to be joyful as we give thanks to you. Holy God, you created in us in your image and gave us life in your hands. With joy and with all creation, we, re we proclaim Please repeat after me. Holy, holy, holy. God of power and grace. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in when, Je when Jesus gave himself over, he took bread. give thanks to you. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After dinner, he took the cup. He said, give thanks. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. Drink from it in remembrance of me. Pour out your spirit on all these elements. Make them for us and our body and blood of Jesus Christ that we may be the body of the Christ for the world. 
So we take the bread. It's made from grains, from many fields, yes, it's formed into one loaf. Because there is one God, through many and in many places, one body. Join us as we partake in the body of Christ. The body of Christ, Christ gave to for you. Join me together. The fruit of the vine is made by many hands, by many places, yet it pours freely. Join us as we share in the blessing of this cup of the new covenant, the cup of blessing poured out for you and for all. Please drink. Eternal God, Thank you for this mystery of faith, which you have given to us all. May we go into the world strengthened by your spirit, in a spirit of generosity, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout to the Lord with us. receive the benediction. May God, who began a good work in you, continue to be at work in your life, guiding, teaching, and equipping you until Jesus Christ returns. May your love and compassion continue to grow, a love that is the knowledge and wise insight so that you will be able to recognize what really matters and live a pure and blameless life. May you live a life centered in the Holy Spirit, a life that bears rich fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, tolerance, and self-control. All the good things that come from following the Holy Spirit. For living this way will bring much glory to God and praise to him. And all God's people said, Amen.